Hi, hello and welcome to uh, this session on inventory management in an omni-channel world. My name is Ali. I'm the CEO of Primer Seller. Primer Seller is an omni-channel inventory and order management software. Uh, and uh, this session is typically for small businesses or medium scale businesses who either already have an omnichannel business or are exploring an omnichannel strategy. What we're going to talk about is uh, we're going to declutter some common definitions that are thrown around um, and what they mean in an omnichannel world. Um, and essentially, after that, the whole common theme is about pitfalls that uh, retailers face while managing inventory in an omnichannel world, followed by uh, you know a Q and A session. All right. Uh, before we just get started, I'd like to introduce us as a company. Primer Seller is an inventory and order management software. Um, if you're a business that's selling online on multiple channels or have a brick and mortar presence on multiple stores as well as sell online, we synchronize all inventory, uh, allow a point of sale module to be run in brick and mortar stores, uh, online order fulfillment and processing uh, integrated with shippers. We also integrate with accounting software like QuickBooks Online uh, and uh, to enable a better seamless communication with your suppliers. You can always create purchase orders and automate them based on reorder points or restock levels. Well, let's get on with our session for the day. Firstly, I'd like to start with decluttering a few definitions. Omnichannel retail is a heavily used term, uh, fairly cliche. So what it really means is that you're selling the same product across uh, channels. So by same product, I mean, whether someone buys that product through your store or they buy it online um, or, or anywhere else, it is the same product as described in the same description with the same pricing and it's consistent. That's that's really essential. Uh, omnichannel marketing is a slightly, you know, confused term, but it's, it's, it's the same parallel applied just for marketing and marketing channels, which means that whether you're marketing, uh, you know, on Google AdWords, you're marketing on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, or you're marketing um, by email or your own uh, website, and then you have the whole physical, uh, you know, marketing world with banners and other images. Be consistent in what brand message you're giving or what product message you're giving, and that's what omnichannel marketing is about. Then you have. Uh, multi-channel retail, which is essentially the use of multiple channels. It's a concept. It's not too different from omnichannel retail. It's just a part of omnichannel retail, right? Uh, similarly, unified commerce, again, is just a concept. It's, it's a state of implementation of technology where you're unifying all your channels of sale into a, a single uh, platform, right? And um, Direct to consumer is uh, where you're bypassing third party retailers and distributors, which means that your consumer is buying directly from your brick and mortar store, from your online website. Even marketplaces like Amazon or eBay, um, we believe is D2C because your consumers are buying directly from you. It's just that you are uh, giving Amazon a commission for hosting your products on their website, right? Next, let's get started with um, you know the core essence of our um, uh, the session today, which is pitfalls in home channel inventory management and how do you avoid them? Okay, the first one which we commonly see amongst most of our retailers is um, you know SKU codes are not consistent across channels and they're not something that you can recognize easily, right? So you typically start off selling on one channel and then you realize you want to give better SKU codes to your product or SKU numbers to your products, and then you end up changing it across Amazon or your website or your store. Uh, it's not human readable, which means that it's not something an employee can read and recognize the product, and this is something that you need to avoid. Try to keep it easy to understand and consistent across channels. Even when you're starting off on your new business, Give some thought to how you're giving SKU codes or SKU numbers uh, the right the right code or, or text that you're using over there. And then there's barcodes. Barcodes 
is not exactly the same as Q codes. Now, barcodes is something which is, should be machine readable. Uh, it's just for quick scanning purposes. So it should be a number. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't have too many alphanumerical characters, which means it should, you should avoid the, the alphabet. Uh, try to keep it short and understand that it's just for machines. It should just be unique across your SKUs. So uh, that is, is you know, the key difference between barcodes and SKU codes, which are often mistaken to have the same purpose and the same number. Uh, in terms of locations, um, you know, there, there are some common things that we'd like to point out. Firstly, in a distributed business where you have a warehouse and then you have stores across, how exactly are you distributing your inventory across these locations becomes very important. Um, it's not just what what's what items you're storing in these locations, but also the distance um, is your is your warehouse uh, located at an optimum distance across all your stores so that they can constantly restock and also fulfill your online demand. That's something that you have to give some thought to. Um, inside your warehouse, you're not just you know fulfilling online orders or orders for your stores, but you're also could be potentially selling to walking customers who live close by to that area, right? So you need to think through what processes you need to accommodate, whether you have a picking and packing station for small sized orders for your direct customers or for bulk orders for your stores or an area dedicated for walking customers. That's something that you need to think about um, you know, for your future expansion. Um, not respecting the fee for process is something commonly seen. This is something which you need to follow irrespective of whether you're selling on the channel or not. You know, you have to keep your your fresh stock at the back, your your older stock in the front, so that someone picking the items is always picking the older items. Uh, unless you belong to special categories like wine, where you you know the FIFO process doesn't apply, you always need to adhere to a process which keeps your stock fresh and not outdated. Um, when you're selling across multiple channels, you don't want to you know, segregate inventory by channel. That really doesn't make sense. You're locking up your working capital, which could have been used to increase your sales. So this is something which is commonly uh, seen with beginner uh, entrepreneurs selling on multiple channels. Eventually, they realize that this is a mistake and move to a more uh, synchronized stock across locations. So you're sharing the same stock across all online as well as brick and mortar channels. Now, when you're especially trying to fulfill online orders from your brick and mortar store, right? Um, it sounds like an amazing idea and it is, but there's just a few things that you have to watch out and take care of while doing it, okay? Um, what typically happens is, let's say you have a limited set of items, uh, you already have online orders for it, but you've not picked it from your uh, store shelves, and a walk-in customer comes and picks it, you'll probably be obliged to sell it to your walk-in customer. This means that you're cannibalizing your own sales. Uh, someone who's placed the order online may get a canceled order. So this is something that you need to account for. Uh, Please make sure that you're constantly picking, um, you know, items. You have very short cycle times uh, for picking orders as and when you receive online orders. Um, you know, you could undercommit what you for some fast moving items to online orders, online channels, because you may want some customers to come pick it up from the store without having to go through that pain of not allowing that sale to go through. Uh, keep reordering from your suppliers. Uh, to make sure that you're, you're restocked with inventory to accommodate both channels of sale. Um, you know, every store or region has, a, you know, if you're, if you're a retailer, you're familiar with your P cars, try to pick and pack online orders before P cars so that you, you're not worried about picking and packing when you already have customers in the store. Um, dark, dark stores have become a really, you know, popular concept which is essentially a small store where you do not allow walk-in customers and is used exclusively for online sales. Now, in our opinion, dark store is nothing but a mini warehouse. Um, this is a strategy that you can choose if you're getting real estate easily or you know, in an affordable place that you don't necessarily need 
uh, you know, walk in traffic, you could use that concept, but you have to be aware that it's little more, I mean, there's not much more than a mini warehouse which adds on to your other overheads that you have to be careful about. Um, so it, this would have happened quite often where you have customers walking into your stores. Uh, they, they're looking for a size or a color that they, you do not have right now at that store and then employees have to say, we don't have it. But if they actually knew that that item is available either in another store or a warehouse or your supplier could quickly restock it, then they would have paid differently. So it's very important for you to train your employees and truly make them believe what the only channel capability is and make sure they capture the sale then and sell there by offering a tablet or a computer where they can place the order online on their behalf or show them other locations that they can, which could, which could potentially be close by that they can go and pick the item from. Channel specific returns is also something that you need to be careful about. You know, you could you could have um, you know a customer who who places the order in your store for an item not available. It can be delivered uh, to your home and from using an e-commerce shipper, and then you may go back and return the item to another store, which you may find on your on your way back to work. Right, so. Your customer can do all of this, and you need to be aware of your customer cross channels, which means that all stores should have the same consistent customer database, which is also the same customer database that has been used for your online sales. This helps you handle store credits much more effectively um, and providing customer delight in the process. Another common pitfall is, you know, at the end of the day, it's acknowledged that you need technology to be a true omni-channel seller, but you cannot invent your own process and then look for a software that perfectly fits it. Uh, you may find something that's close to what you desire in terms of a process of, of features, but then you need to tweak your processes to match that software so that you don't have that friction between what's being entered into the system and what's being followed on your store or warehouse floor. Um, a related pitfall is typically sometimes we see this often that sellers try to adopt a software that will help them grow on omnichannel uh, sales but they get intimidated by how hard it is or their employees get intimidated by how hard it is to adopt that software. We call it the software adoption ramp and we recommend that you don't avoid it. You need to embrace it. Um, this is fairly standard for software across industries. You're initially going to find it hard. Some data may not be set up correctly. Uh, you may not be immediately aware of all nuances. It's going to take some time for you to do it. But once you overcome that, uh, life gets much more simpler than it was without that. So this is something that you should be careful about. And um, you know, towards the end, I'd like to point out to you know another very common pitfall where people believe that doing stock audits or stock tastes is something you want to do just once a year. That's a very bad idea, especially if you're selling only channel retail, right? Um, it's inevitable that despite multiple systems, your your items may either go out of stock or the common you know suspects like um, pilferage or damages might be you know taking the toll on your business. So you need to do stock takes or stock audits much more frequently, at least once a month, if not at least once in a quarter. You should have gone through your entire location, right? You need not do this at one shot. You can take a few racks or a few aisles at a time and constantly keep counting stock to see that your system and your physical stock matches. This will help you prevent for a lot of nasty surprises towards the end of the year when you do it all at one shot and suddenly find stock missing that you could have adjusted for or you discover stock that you could have sold but lost the opportunity to. Um, some other useful tips, which is, uh, you know, fairly obvious, uh, but it's always useful to keep repeating it and remembering it. Uh, maintain your inventory scan for items that are damaged. A lot of times you sell online, the item comes back slightly damaged, you keep it on a shelf 
and that may be a bad experience for a walk-in customer to come pick it up. Make sure that you're uh, maintaining your uh, stock um, and constantly repairing and replacing items. Um, your supplier support across locations is important. Uh, you can only channel, make sure your suppliers know that so that they're able to ship not just to your central warehouse, but also to other locations. That helps save your costs, your time, and your effort. Uh, so even if they charge you a little bit more for that, I believe it is something that's worth it. Um, drop shipping is something which is commonly employed when you're, uh, you know, you want to explore multiple online channels, especially folks who do not have a brick and mortar presence. Uh, but do this only with reliable vendors. Otherwise, you just end up having a lot of sales for which your 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 supplier is not able to replenish uh, for. And uh, one last point we'd like, we'd like to add is to keep keep a higher pre-order point uh, so that you're constantly replenishing your inventory, especially for fast-moving items, um, because it's easy to lose track of high frequency sales, especially in an omni-channel environment where um, you know, physically or manually you don't know whether your stock is being consumed by channel A or channel B or channel C. It's important that you're constantly replenishing your stock. Uh, well, that's it uh, from us. Um, we hope you found the uh, session useful and informative. Uh, we hope to do more sessions soon, and you can always check out our software that helps on each channel retail at www.trimerseller.com, and you can sign up for a free trial and explore it. You can ping us on our chat support on our website, and we'll be happy to guide you through any questions you have about your business or Primer Seller. All right. Thank you so much. Bye.